In today's tutorial let's learn how to do the herringbone stitch. You can see it right here. This is a really interesting stitch. It takes a little bit of getting used to but this is great to know when you're doing waves, chevrons or ripples, whatever you want to call it. It's going to go up and down. That's the herringbone stitch and that's coming up next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. In today's tutorial I'm going to be able to show you the stitch that I just talked about. And what we have is an example of all of the stitches being used at the same time in a particular sample. So what I've done with the white here, those are all the single crochets. So we have double crochets, half double crochets, we have crisscross, we have bobbles, front post, <laughs> modified front post trebles here. We have the herringbone stitch here and then we have the seed stitch right here in the back. In today's tutorial I'm going to be covering the particular stitch that is listed in this particular video. I'm going to show you how to do it but this is example how all of those particular stitches can work together in order to create a really amazing afghan. Now this afghan does have a, a front and the back side. You can also use this particular um, kind of sample for doing scarves and really the sky is the limit and in today's tutorial I'm going to explain a little bit more about how you can customize this in order to do a project of your own. So here's what it looks like and we have our example. It's going up and down and this is just a small swatch. So I had to do a small swatch in order to figure out all the math for you. I have figured this all the way out from a scarf size just like this all the way to a king size afghan. I've done the math for you to tell you exact chain count. But I want to make this an educational video because it's just easier to give you that information but if you don't really understand it then what's the point right? That's a video tutorial. So what we have is that each chevron equals a certain amount of chain stitches and in my particular pattern 28 chains will take you from one point all the way to the next just like you see here. And so then we have side edges that are a portion of just a section of each side. So what we have here in order to get one chevron you have to do 28 chains and then to, to stay in balance you have to add an extra 18 to your, to your list. So what we have here is that if you were ever to customize this and say that you wanted um, to do a different size you would, you would crochet in multiples of 28. So for example let's say I wanted three chevrons. You would go three times 28 stitches Okay, that will give you a certain amount and then you will add 18 extra chains at the end of that in order to stay in balance. So it's just a very easy way. Now on my website I have figured out all of those particular uh, uh, chains to start for all of them. Now you're gonna think to yourself, wow some of those chains are huge and they are huge but you have to compensate that when you go up and down like so is that it's not really like a hundred chains straight across. It's if you did a hundred chains uh, straight across it would be longer but because you are going in an up and down motion you need more chains in order to maintain maintain that, that and that's why that there's so many extra chains. So on my website I have all of that information for you but if you want to customize it the secret answer is 28 for every one of the chevrons and then you just have to add 18 uh, chains at the very end in order to get your sides to be equal. You should also keep in mind that this afghan sample is a one sided sample. Not all of these stitches look great on the other side. So the bobble stitch for example it does not exist on the underside. Okay, you'll see that it's completely flat and also with the crisscross, the crisscross appears better in the front side than it does in the back side. So when you're doing this particular project I'm going to be telling you what is your front side and what is your back side so that you can know exactly where to start. Some of these stitches you have to start on the back side. It's called the wrong side technically in crochet but you have to start on the back side. For example, bobbins or bobbles like this only appear on the opposite. So as you crochet the bob bobbles pop in behind. So if I was to bobble along here in this direction the bobbles would appear on the back side. So every time I do a bobble I actually have to work on the back side so that it does pop out to the front side. So some of these stitches are just like that. The herringbone is like that. Um, the uh, modified front post trebles are like that. Uh, a lot of the half double crochets, single crochets and um, Double or double crochets. <laughs> Did I say that already? Those don't matter but you have to just be conscious. So in the particular pattern I'm about to show you I'm going to have you mark what is the front side, what is the back side so that if you have to adjust and you have to know that then you'll know it right from the very beginning. So let's just uh, quickly review. It's going to be a five millimeter size H crochet hook. I've used Karen Simply Soft throughout this whole thing that the beautiful colors are from that particular uh, line. So this is going to be a generic intro 
on all of the eight different videos because I'm going to show you how to get started. So you'll see here the blue is how I got started. You can see I did a perimeter in white so that's kind of added in afterward. But all of the the intros for all of these eight are exactly identical and then once we start from that point we're going to then take you through all of the different examples and those are each listed as an individual video because you may not want to mix it and match just like so. This is also part of the Stitches Right uh, game that we're doing uh, on YouTube as well as Facebook and uh, we're just having fun of mixing and matching stitches at random and that's how this sample has come to be. So without further ado let's move on to the example that we want to teach you in today's tutorial. So let's get started. We're going to get you to do the first layer and it will be the chain plus we will also start then the double crochets and then from this point then forward we then move on to the example that is listed within today's tutorial. And insert that you know, onto my hook. So we have in the instructions in our website all the different chains that you would need for your size of project that you want to go. But today I'm going to show you a swatch sample. So as I mentioned there's 28 um, chains in one chevron plus 18 and that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm just going to uh, chain 28. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So in 28 this is one chevron. Okay this is without any sides on it at all. So that's one chevron. So I said that there has to be sides on it. So we're going to add another 18 chains. So let's add 18. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So if you were doing multiples, so you would have done multiples of 28 and at the very end you'll add in your 18 in order to keep it in balance. So now I have one chevron and I have the enough chains to do both sides of the project. Let's move on to the next step. So now that you've gone all the way across we're now going to start and we're gonna uh, get our uh, chevron to be working right away. So we're going to count back from the uh, to the fourth chain. So count under. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. Turn the chain over and get the back hump only and double crochet into that. And this will create a beautiful finish on the other side of the, on the bottom and double crochet. So the chaining of 3 and the double crochet would count as one stitch into the same one and this matters down in the future. So the next five are going to be one double crochet each. So let's count that out loud. So one and two and three, four and five. So what I like to do when I'm in this particular stage I like to look at it. So the first two are together. They're into the same stitch. So there should be five double crochets by themselves and there are. So that is going to be the side. So that this is going to be the side in, in a down direction like this. The next three are going to be three double crochets together. So how to do that is that you wrap the hook and going into the next chain is that going in yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two, two loops and then hold. And you're gonna do that two more times. So yarn over go to the next stitch in, yarn over pull through, pull through two and hold. So now you got two there. You gotta do it one more time. So yarn over pull through, pull through two and hold. You should have four loops on your hook and you're gonna yarn over and pull through all of those loops. And so now three double crochets just became together as one and this is going to be the coming down and then turning and going back up in the other direction like that. So that's how you do three together. The next twelve on your chain are going to be each double crochet and let's count that out loud. So we have one, two, three, and 
4 and 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12. So this will always exist when you're going in an up direction. So if your chain was a lot longer, every time that you finish a three together, the next section will all be 12 by itself. And I like to just double check and count. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So once you get your 12 in, the next one will be three double crochets into the same one and this is the top of the chevron. So every time you get to a top of a chevron, there will always be three double crochets when you're moving across the first row. So every time you're gonna move in the down direction now go and until you get to the other side is that there will be 12 double crochets by themselves. So we went up on the other side with 12 going up but now you're gonna go 12 going down. So that was two, three, This is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So do you get that? So every chevron going in the up direction is going to have 12 by themselves. At the top you'll have three into the same one and then there'll be 12 going down the other side. So I'm gonna count that 12 going down. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So now we're at the bottom again. So the next three are going to be three together. Okay and you just do it how I showed you before. So you just gather them up and the three will be together. So if your chain's a lot longer, the next section would, would be going 12 going back up and then your three at the top and then 12 going back down and you keep doing that until you get to the last little section just like this. So what you're going to do then and the final here is that the next five will be one double crochet each. So one, two, three, four and five and this will leave you with one extra stitch which you're supposed to have and the final that you have will have two double crochets in it. And if I can just grab your attention before you take off on me here. So at the very fir first remember how we did that uh, chain three and the double crochet counts at one. So on the other side the two being in there counts um, into one stitch as well. So this is what it would look like but your sample would obviously be a lot longer but you have the up and down motion now ready and now we can move on. But before we move on what I want you to do is that I want you to grab a spare piece of yarn and that spare piece of yarn is going to act as a stitch marker. So using a piece of stitch marker and just, just a piece of yarn, what I want you to do, the side that you just want to cross on, I want you just in the edge here and I want you just to insert your hook in behind just a piece of the strand and just bring the yarn through. The, and this is just a stitch holder. This is just going to tell you that every time you do anything you will know what is the front side and what is the back side because once you get onto these projects sometimes it gets really confusing what is front and what is back. Okay? So this stitch marker right in the front will always tell me that this is always gonna be the front side. The next part of this tutorial we're going to start and you're either gonna have to watch out for the stitch marker uh, whether it's on the front or the back side and some of these stitches it doesn't even matter. But uh, just do that because it just makes it a lot more sense. Let's so let's move along and do the next part. 
We're now going to start on doing the herringbone stitch and the herringbone is really quite interesting. It took me a little bit of time getting used to this particular stitch. Never did it before in my life. I don't even think I heard about it if to be quite honest with you. So what you're gonna do is that it's a really weird start for every one of these stitches and then you're going to have this beautiful defined line. Now when you're going to work on this um, you want to start on the wrong side. So when we go to do the herringbone we're going to start it on the wrong side so that we get the beautiful effect that is gonna go on and that will appear on the front side. So in between if you're doing the single crochets in between they're gonna pop out maybe a herringbone maybe it does look like a bone when you kind of look at the stitch work the way it's going to operate it's really quite neat and we're not going to show you how to do that next. So I now have my project and you would not need to fasten off if you're doing the herringbone at this time um, but it's actually kind of neat and we want to be able to do it. So we can tell which is the front side and which is the back side. So for those that are doing the stitches right you want to do it so that you're looking at the back side first. So the herringbone we're going to crochet along the back of it and then we're going to single crochet on the front side and that's what makes it really quite amazing. So without further ado let's just uh, grab our yarn up and we are going to start. Now this uh, particular kind of stitch takes practice. It is a little bit unique in many ways and uh, here let's go. So we're going to go into the very first stitch and we're going to attach our yarn and we're going to chain up three. One, two and three. And now we're going to start doing the herringbone as we go across. So let's begin to do the herringbone. So we wanna come into the very same stitch and we wanna wrap the hook and I'm gonna go slow. So going in and we want to wrap the yarn and pull through but we cannot just stop here. We need to pull it through the next loop as well. This is where the practice needs to come. Okay, so now you have two loops on your hook. You're going to wrap and pull through only the first loop and now you're going to wrap and pull through both. That is the herringbone. So you end up with a beautiful line that is kind of on the, on the front side of the project. So we're gonna come down the valley just like we would have in the rest of these tutorials and there's gonna be five herring bones by itself. So let's wrap the hook going into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through and through one loop. Yarn over, pull through one loop only and then yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so let's try it again. So wrap through, yarn over, pull through and through one loop yarn over, pull through one and then through two. And you want to do so that there is five of these by itself. So let's continue. So just in, pull through and through, pull through one and then two. Okay, let's carry on. So going in, pull through, go through that one and one loop, pull through one then two. Okay, so we want a total of five of these in a row. So let's just go next, pull through and through, pull through one, then two. So now we're in the middle. So we're in the base here. So there's five of these herring bones by itself and now in the base here we need to collect these herring bones. So we have to not finish the stitch. So here's how you're going to do the herring bones together. Okay, so you're gonna wrap the hook going into the next one, pull through that one in one loop and then pull through one loop and hold. So do not finish that second one. So let's do another one. So we're gonna wrap the hook going into the next stitch, pull through that one and one loop and then wrap and pull through one loop. So next one, so wrap and in, pull through there and one loop and then yarn over, pull through one loop and hold. You'll have four loops back on your hook and just wrap and pull through all four. Okay, so this is what it's looking like on the other side. Okay, so let's uh, continue along. So we're gonna go up the hill and there's going to be 12 herring bones all the way to the top. So let's uh, begin to do that. So th I'm going to speed up. So just going in and I'm gonna count. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, and this is the final one. So it's 12. So how do I know if I'm on the 12th one here? If you look at the, see the 3, the 12th is in the first one of the 3 and the one in the middle is the next empty one. So if I look at it, this is what it looks like on the other side. And there's going to be 3 herring bones right in the middle. So the same stitch. So 1. This took me a, a while to get used to just the different motions with the hook to do this particular stitch. So you're gonna have to give yourself some patience. So there's, there's now 3 in there and now coming down the other side there's going to be 12 going down and I'll keep going. So there's gonna be 12 in this direction. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So how do I know if I'm in the bottom? I did count 12 so I know I'm there but if I look at it see how these are grouped together. So there's a, this is the middle, there's an empty on both sides and there's going to, it's going to be 3 together just like it was before. So in, pull through and just don't finish it all the way. So you're gonna do this like I showed you already. Okay, and then they'll be all together. And now we're gonna come up. So if you were coming up on the regular side then there'll be 12 herring bones coming up. Okay, you're gonna get to your top and put 3 at the top and then 12 all the way down. So if you come to the side edge there will only be a portion of section. So the next 5 will be by themselves. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, and the last one here, there's going to be 2 in, uh, it's going to be 1 herringbone and then the final one is a double crochet. Okay, so that's what you have. So you turn it back to the right side. You can see that the beautiful stitch work is on the front side. So when you go to redo this one here, you're going to do it like it's a single crochet and then you can go all the way across single crochet and then come back as a herringbone. So to do the uh, single crochet, it's chain one. It's two single crochets into the same one just like it was before. There's gonna be five I'm heading back down to the, the first point. This is three, four, and five. Okay, the middle ones here, I can see how it's three is bunched. So there's the middle. I have one on either side. Just like that. And now there's gonna be 12 going up. And then in the middle, you have three single crochets right in the middle and then 12 on the way down. Keep doing that all, way, all the way across. When you get to this other side, there will be only five going up the other side and then the last one will be two single crochets. So this is, would be how you do the herringbone and this is a really unique stitch and it actually looks really amazing. It takes a little bit of getting used to it but I'm kind of proud of myself too because I learned something new even with my own little project. Till next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day.